Hi there guys and welcome back to day 15 of the month of Retro Brown. Today we are doing a Ratata only run. Yes, the Route 1 rodent from Gen 1. We are doing a solo run with just that Pokemon today. And I'm actually really excited for this one to be fair. So looking at its base stats and everything on face value, Ratata looks awful. It really does. But as we found out on the Raticate run a few months ago, it actually is so, so underrated as a Pokemon. And because that was the evolution, ever since that video, I've been really wanting to do the first stage of this evolution line. We are going to go with Jubbles as our rival for today. He's one of our subscribers, a very active subscriber on our videos. Thank you for all the comments and all the advice and <laughs> just the general conversation. I'm, I look forward to it every time I um, release a video. So we're going to re replace... Ratata with Bulbasaur for this run so that the rival has Charizard at the end. That way we're going to have a bit more of an interesting battle at the end. Yes, we do get type coverage moves for pretty much all of the Pokemon. But out of all of them, I would say Charizard's probably going to be the strongest matchup against us. Looking at our starting moveset, we actually don't get many good moves at all. We actually only learn, well, four more moves via level up. We get Quick Attack at level 7, Hyper Fang at 14, Focus Energy and Super Fang. So which means we're going to have to do a lot of reliance on our TM moveset. When you look at our base stats in general anyway, they, are, they do look garbage. But we have a decent attack stat, but that speed stat is going to be so helpful in this run. At level 9, we now have Quick Attack, which means that we can always have a priority move. And even though we're getting Sand Attacked at here... As soon as we can set up a few Tail Whips and we can get a few hits in, we should be alright. We just need to make sure we don't take too much damage, which unfortunately we do with Gust. Sand Attack is such a debilitating move and we lose this first battle against him here. But I am a sucker for pain, so we're going to try this again. I'm pretty sure we can definitely do this at the level we're at. So level 9... Let's see how we do. We're just going to go straight for quick attacks and try and take out this PG as quick as possible. We do get hit by one sand attack there and we miss the following hit. We hit the next one and then get hit again by sand attack but we finally take it down after four. Not great really but it gives us a chance to start using tail whip against the Charmander and one should be more than enough to try and take it down. We get a critical hit on that second quick attack meaning we can take the win. So... In terms of the moveset we're going to need to be able to beat Brock, we're not going to be able to do this comfortably until level 14. And that's the reason why we're trying to get up the levels right now. We want Hyper Fang on our moveset. It's an 80 base power move. It's iconic to Rattata. I don't think any other Pokemon Gen 1 gets Hyper Fang, apart from Raticate of course. But with that power of a move and the higher chance of the crits that we can get with our high speed... We actually got a very good chance of beating Brock at this lower level. So we're going to go in at level 14 and see how we do. First out is going to be his Geodude, of course. So we're going to just go straight for Hyper Fang. We want to take this out as quick as possible and we want to get those critical hits. Because even if we get through to the, to the Onyx at this level, we can then just use Tail Whips to reduce the defences and then take them out. So as he uses Defense Curl, we're just going to try and keep his defense as borderline normal as possible. And then when he uses Tackle, that's when we go in for the attacks. We don't get critical hits here until maybe later in this fight. And we're losing health way too quickly. That's why we wanted critical hits. Did you see how much damage that did? Fantastic move, Hyper Fang. We do manage to... Well, we don't manage to take down the Geodude at this point. But I think this is going to come down to a lot of RNG, really. It's definitely possible at level 14. We just need to get the right look on the crits. So, we're nearly at half HP here for the Geodude. And, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. We want that critical hit. We don't get it here. We've got 8 Hyper Fangs left, 7 Hyper Fangs left. But we've got 16 HP to go against the Sonics. So... We do outspeed, which is great. We do not want to be screeched, to be honest. But we need to take down its defense. So now it's started using Bide. Perfect time to use Tail Whip. And with all of that, it means that we got a critical hit there. 
It does quite a lot of damage. He goes for bite again and we can just start alternating our moves. We don't want to be hit by tackle. That's the worst thing that can happen in this fight right now. And finally, our last Hyperfang takes down Brock. This is why Rat Ratata is very underrated in Gen 1. I, I love I love it. <laughs> it's a little rodent that most people disregard, but I honestly, I love the Rata line. Next up, we're in Nugget Bridge, and it makes more sense for us to go against the rival here. We need to get rid of that Pidgeotto before it starts using Sand Attack again. So we've been Sand Attack twice now. We're about half HP. Abra doesn't know any attacking moves, so it's a free battle. We'll take it out at our own leisure as soon as Hyperfang decides to hit. Three misses in a row, so I go for quick attack, and it's a one hit shot. <laughs> so we go into level 19, Rattata comes out, so it's a Rattata v Rattata, and Hyperfang takes it down in one. So we just got one Pokemon left, which is the Charmander. It does no Ember. What we we need it to hit this Hyperfang. We don't get that last Hyperfang, and Ember takes us out. That just came down to bad RNG, really, with the Sand Attack. If we can make sure we can get through those Sand Attacks we can get a good run on this. We missed the sand attack there and we can take it down. We haven't had our accuracy lowered at all. We know that quick attack is good on the Abra. And it goes down. Next up, of course, is their Rata. So we're gonna go with Hyperfang and that takes out in one, meaning we've got full accuracy to take out this Charmander. The big downside to Hyperfang is it's only 80, 90% accuracy. And as you know in Gen 1, if your accuracy is not 100%, it might as well be zero. You could have 99% accuracy and it will still miss pretty much all the time. That brings us on to Misty. So, Misty is going to be a bit of a problem. We do have low special and we can't take them out in one. They'd like to spam their water moves because they know that that's our special is that low. We're not going to learn for focus energy in Gen 1. It's a broken move. It actually doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And we need to get the Hyper Fangs in. It's not doing very much. Hopefully the Starmie just uses... Oh, uh, no. We lose. <sighs> How am I going to get through this? So, there's really no change to the strategy at all. Hyper Fang is the best move to be using at this point until we get round to getting Body Slam. We don't need focus energy, get rid of it. And next up is the Starmie. We're on full HP, so we've actually got more of a chance here to actually do some good damage. We've got a critical hit on that first one and a critical hit on the second, taking her out. And that is Misty done. Means that we can then move on to the SSN and see how we do against the rival there. We can also pick a Bubble Beam, which will be an interesting move for us to use, considering we've got a few rock Pokemon coming up. So until we get the likes of Blizzard on Cinnabar, this will be our main move for dealing with the rock and the ground type Pokemon. Bonjour, let's see how we do on the SSN. First up is Pokemon is going to be a Pidgeotto. And, well, we don't have a Thunder type move yet. We will get that after we've beaten the SSN when we can beat Surge. But we do have Dig. And we do have Body Slam now. Body Slam, fantastic move. And it's actually worth replacing Hyper Fang with Body Slam. Because it's the same type move, um, same type attack bonus being a normal type move, it does more damage than normal, and of course it's 100% accurate, and has the chance to, to um, paralyze, making it one of the perfect moves for this run. We picked up Dig over in Cerulean as well, and that'll deal with the fire types before they become fire flying. Rattata wants to evolve, but of course this is a Rattata only run, and that means you have to stay as your base form bit. Let's see how we do against Surge. We demoted him to private in the previous video. Can we keep him as a private in this video? We go into this battle poisoned and we get Sonic Boom to start off with. So we are off to a very bad start. We get Sonic Boom twice and this is not looking good at all. Body Slam is then going to take out the Pikachu in one. And next up is the Raichu. If we do not outspeed, uh, nah, that's a loss. And Lieutenant Surge becomes Lieutenant again. He's no longer Private Surge. So I think this battle is very doable. The big problem with it was that we got hit by two Sonic Booms to start off with. Next up is the Pikachu. Of course, it's going to go down with a Body Slam. And that just leaves us with Raichu with a, when we've got more HP. 
we are still going to go for dig it's super effective and it's worth taking three points of poison damage just for that reason which means we can now finish it off with a quick attack and take the win we move up to level 27 and we can move on to rock tunnel so we also do pick up thunderbolt here as well which is going to be another good coverage move for us and we can go against the exploding hiker in rock tunnel this is the reason why we wanted bubble beam bubble beam's fantastic move for these types of pokemon these types of trainers and it also be fantastic when we come up the like against the likes of giovanni the graveler as well has got a bit more bulk to it but still cannot stand up to the might of Rattata's bubble beam and that brings us on to erica now erica has been a thorn in my side pun intended for the last however many videos because we've been mostly doing water type pokemon runs we're not a water type this time but she goes up for different strategies normally she goes for sleep powder first this time she went for poison powder considering we got poisoned before surge as well there seems to be a little bit of a trend going throughout this run that we're going to get poisoned and i don't know what it is with the ai in this attempt but yeah they just decided they wanted to poison me a lot Annoyingly, Tangler binds us, and that means that the poison keeps taking effect. But we take it down. We've got 28 HP to attempt this Vile Plume. Petal Dance is going to do big damage, and unfortunately, we take another loss. It's just. Rattata is a fun Pokemon to use, but it's just not bulky. We can't tank hits, we need to get one shots. We do manage to get through the Victory Bell without taking any damage this time. Tangler. We need to get it paralysed so it has that chance of not hitting. It goes for Constrict, which is the better move for it to have gone for. Bind means that you can't attack. Constrict means you still can. We're going to go for Body Slam the Vile Plume, and it goes for Mega Drain, which does big damage. It goes for Poison Powder, and it goes for Poison Powder twice. See, this is what I don't get about the AI in this run. They were so intent on poisoning me, whereas on pretty much... 99% of my other runs, they won't use Poison Powder on me, unless it is super effective. But we're a normal type Pokemon, so it doesn't make sense why they would prioritise that over a sleep type move. Gen 1's weird. <laughs> it is very weird. Moving into Giovanni, we're not even at full HP going into this. We know that Bubble Beam's going to decimate his rock Pokemon. Kangaskhan is the real threat here. He goes for Guard Spec first, and we are not out speeding really. Or I think it might be a speed tie. I'm not too sure there. Either way, level 34, we're trying to learn Super Fang, but I'm not a fan of Super Fang. Really not a fan of it. It takes off exactly half of the opponent's remaining HP. Which is great if you're on against the likes of a Snorlax, but yeah, I don't really see the point of using it in a solar run. Moving on to Lavender Tower, of course. We can go against the Pidgeotto against in the rival. He no longer has his Raticate because, of course, we might have killed it on the SSN. But our rat Ratata reigns supreme. He has taken out all of his Pokemon. I mean, imagine this little tiny rat body slamming a Gyarados. <laughs> I just, that image alone makes me laugh. I'd love someone to um, create an illustration of that. If you're watching these videos and you do illustrations, please send me that. Please send me an illustration of a Ratata body slamming a Gyarados. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> and Jubbles has not won this attempt. Now we've beaten Lavender Tower, the game has opened up. This means we can go over to Likes of Fuchsia, which we have done first. We could have gone over to Silph Core, but considering how much of a glass cannon Rattata is, I thought it'd be better to go and get some more levels first. Now we're not really doing too good against Koga here. We're on the first coffin, and he's already taken out half our HP. Which is not good at all. We could be using Dig, and that probably is the better play to be doing. We are quite under-leveled for Koga, I would say. Like, being level 38, when most of his Pokemon are, like, 37, 39, and 43, I think the reason is. Yeah, we we are not really as high level as you might think we should be for this point in the game. We managed to get through the muck, and we've still got quite a lot of HP. So, I'm going to go for Body Slam against the Coffins. It goes for Smoke Screen, which is not the best thing, really. We're not going to hit most of them attacks now because even just one... <laughs> I mean, look at this. Only one smoke screen's been hit and yet I'm missing everything. 
It takes me four digs to actually land a hit. That's how broken the, the accuracy moves are in Gen 1. It's infuriating. Absolutely infuriating. But we do the dig self-destruct strategy and we take the win. Probably the cheekiest way to take the win against Koga, but I find it so funny. It's worth doing. That brings us over to Silvco. We have to beat Silvco to open up the rest of the game, really. We could have got Surf to go and go down Cinnabar, but we need that Lapras, really, that you get after this rival. We have now taught Thunderbolt to our to our rat, and it's still not doing very much, so to be fair, Body Slam's still the way to go. Execute is next. Body Slam is dealing half damage to pretty much all of his Pokemon. Annoyingly, he's set up a Reflect and he's set up Leech Seed, so we're now against the clock. This is not a good place to be in. And every time we miss, that Leech Seed is just getting back all the HP that we've just dealt to it. This is why I hate when they use Reflect. And yeah, it's just going to sap away at us slowly, and this becomes excruciating to watch. We're missing every single hit, and I can't understand why. Why are we... I'm not even sure we've been hit by an accuracy lowering move. Why are we missing so much? This is infuriating. And eventually, we die to Leech Seed. That is the cheapest win that the rival has had on us in so long. I think I might have been hit by a couple of sand attacks by the Pidgeot. On this attempt, we don't get hit by any, so it should be a different story. Execute comes out. And Body Slam. Oh, we get seeded again. Why do you want to poison and seed my Rattata? That sounds so wrong sometimes. Anyway. Thunderbolt does half damage on the Gyarados. And it gets taken down. That just leaves two Pokemon. Alakazam, not very bulky at all. One Body Slam is more than enough to take it out with a critical hit. That just leaves the Charizard. We do still have Bubble Beam. But Body Slam is still the best place to be making. It's... This is why I say it is Gen 1's MVP move. It is fantastic. Best move to be using. We beat the rival and we move on to Giovanni. We don't allow you to evolve, but we also need to pick up the Lapras from the guy just on the left here. And that gives us our Surf user. Next up is Giovanni, and with beating Giovanni, we can complete the Silph Core quest line. We're going into this at level 43. Only just around about the same level as his um, ace. His Kangaskhan comes out level 35. It goes for a Tail Whip. Actually helps us out with the Badge Boost glitch. And we're now level 44. Rhyhorn, of course, is going to be weak to Bubble Beam. But it still tanks a hit. Which is not looking good now. We've got 59 HP to go against the Nida Queen. So, we need to use Dig so it doesn't hit us. It's going to do half damage with Dig and he goes for a Guard Spec. Perfect. That's a perfect scenario. Gives us a chance to take it down. And there is a first time victory against Giovanni. And that leaves only a few trainers left. We need to go to Sabrina. But I also decided... You know, I haven't been to the dojo for a while. Let's see my mouse beat up some humanoid Pokemon. We body slam the Hitmonlee. And body slam the Hitmonchan. It does manage to tank one body slam that Hitmonchan. Boxes us a little bit. But then we just decide, you know what? We're not in a boxing match. Body slam. <laughs> oh, body slam. A little rodent body slamming everything into oblivion. This is... You can't write this stuff, really, can you? <laughs> and it's going to be the same same scenario in this Sabrina fight. Body slam is just way too powerful. Way, way too powerful. We're going to use dig against the Venomoth because it is technically bug poison. I remembered this time. And that means... Oh, that's a big hit. We're on 7 HP for this Alakazam. I don't think we're going to win this. Yeah, we're not going to win. Let's try again. Yeah, Venomoth is bug poison, not bug flying. Which means that dig and other ground moves actually do hit it. Which I find hilarious. Body Slime is going to do big damage on Mr. Mime. It only goes for a double slap. But because it's Pokemon, a double slap turns into triple slap. Venomoth comes out, we're going to go for Body Slam and we get the critical hit. Next up is the Alakazam, we've got a lot more HP to work with here. He goes for Reflect, of course he goes for Reflect and Recover, but we get one critical hit and that takes him down. 
Sabrina has been beaten by a little rodent from Route 1. And we can move on to Blaine. We still haven't taught ourselves Blizzard. We did just pick it up in the, in the Cinnabar Mansion. But we don't need it yet, really. To be fair, Dig has a much more powerful move to be using in this circumstance. 100%, 100% accuracy, 100 bias power, and it's super effective against fire types. So why would we use that when our special is a worse stat and water moves are special? We pretty much sweep through his entire team using Dig. He misses a fire blast. If that hit us, we've done a lot of damage. Take down does a lot, but Dig is more than enough to finish him off. So we go up to level 51, and we only have one, one gym leader left, really. That is Giovanni for the third time. And this is his penultimate battle. That pretty much is not going to be too special in all eyes. We have Blizzard on our move set. That's going to be the main move we're going to use here. Blizzard hits the Rhyhorn, and it's a one-shot KO. Next up is the Dug Trio. This is the one I'm actually the most worried about in this entire fight. Because it outspeeds us, it can use Slash and our defense is a garbage. Nida Queen is next and Dig is the best player here. It does half damage and then we get hit by Body Slam. So we're actually not in too good of a position here. Which means the Nida King has got a chance to KO us. If it goes to Poison Sing, perfect, but we get the critical anyway. Last up is the Rhydon and we want Blizzard to crit. He doesn't and he goes for Stomp. That seems quite fitting. A big rhino like that has just stepped on the mouse. I mean, a bit cruel, but at the same time, that seems more realistic. <laughs> we paralyzed that Rhyhorn on the reattempt. And Dugtrio goes for Sand Attack, but misses. Perfect scenario. We're on full HP for this Needle Queen, but we still take a Body Slam. But we're on, we are on a lot better health than we were last time. Next up is the Needle King. If we can crit this again, that would be fantastic. Come on. We don't crit and he goes for Tackle? That Needle King's got still got Tackle. Why did I not know this? We froze the ride. Why does that Needle King still know Tackle? That's... <laughs> oh, I love Gen 1 so much. <laughs> Why does that Nina King still have tackle? I've never seen it use tackle before. <laughs> okay, let's let's move on to the rival. Blizzard is the best player to be using against the Pidgeot. I find it weird that a little rat rodent can learn Blizzard when it's a normal type Pokemon. It's also the best player to be using against the Rhyhorn. Execute is next and we're still going to go for Blizzard. It doesn't take it out in one and again we get Leech Seeded. Genuinely, that Execute is more of a threat than the Executor in the very final fight. Because the Executor in the final fight has only got Hypnosis, Stomp and Barrage. That Execute's actually got Solar Beam. I'm pretty sure it's got Solar Beam. Why did he... <laughs> Gen 1 is so weird. It's so, so weird. Oh, right. Charizard's locked himself into Rage and that gives us a good chance... To take him out with the next body slam. Level 55 going into Elite 4 here. And we are doing really, really well. So, so well. Lorelei is up first. And to be fair, even though we've got Agatha coming up. This is the trainer I'm most worried about. Because Thunderbolt barely does anything. We've got Awful Special. And they start nerfing my attack with Growl. So we're in a very bad position here. I haven't used my rare candies yet, but if this attempt doesn't go well, I might have to use them. Aurora Beam hits and does big damage. Next up, we've got Slowbro, which is very bulky. Yeah, I don't even think we're going to get past this Slowbro. Okay, we do get past the Slowbro. We're on 13 HP for the Jinx. And I misclicked and used Thunderbolt. I should have used Dig there. Okay. Focus. We've used some rare candies. We can now do half damage on that Dugong. And yet, it still took three hits. Cloister is next and Thunderbolt is going to be a best move to use. I misclicked for Blizzard. And he locks us into Clamp. Another loss. Third time's the charm? Maybe? 
We're going to go for Dig on the Dugong. It's not super effective, but it does quite a bit of damage. Thunderbolt actually paralyzes for once. And we take him out with Body Slam. So we got through the Dugong without losing any HP. That's perfect. Cloyster is going to take two hits with Thunderbolt. And we also paralyze it. Perfect. Now we're on to the Slowbro. It's only got, really got Water Gun that can do damage to us. So as long as we can get past it with Thunderbolts and we don't take Growls. We can do alright. Jinx is next. We're going to go for Dig. And she goes for a Double Slap. It doesn't even do half damage, and we're going to break that thrash by digging again. So, she's going to be confused now. Hits herself in confusion, and one more dig takes her out. We've got 53 HP for this Lapras. This is not good. Hydro Pump misses. Body Slam. We hang on with 9 HP. How does a little rat like that hang on after being Body Slammed by a... Bloody mammoth, like sea mammoth. <laughs> Crazy. This is why I wanted to do the Rattata run. This is so fun. Br Bruno is up next, and we've got Blizzard for the Onyx. We've got Body Slam for the Hitmonchan. It's going to take two hits of Body Slam to take out the Hitmonchan. And thankfully, we didn't get frozen there by Ice Punch. We're level 65 going into the Hitmonlee. And this time, we nearly take it out in one. I'm kind of worried about this matchup coming up. If it uses submission on us, that's probably going to be a one hit KO. It's super effective against us. So, Body Slam or Dig. We're going to go for Dig, see how much that does. Not very much at all. Body Slam's the best player here. We've just got to make sure it doesn't use. Why does he just keep using Focus Energy? Bruno, you are awful. You've just been beaten by a little rat. <laughs> Oh, Gen 1, Gen 1, Gen 1. So, so fun. Agatha is next, and of course, this is the whole reason why we have Dig on our moveset. It's a super effective move against her ghost poison types. Golbat, of course, we can't use that on, so we're going to go for Blizzard. And then she switches into Haunter, which means we can set up another Dig. And there's two ghost Pokemon down. Golbat comes back out. We're going to go for Body Slam this time. Wing Attack doesn't do much. And we're on to the Arbok. I'm actually kind of interested to see how a Zubat or a Golbat run would go. Zubat would be awful, I think. But I think Golbat might be pretty cool. I might have to... If they come up on the next um, runs, I might do a Golbat or a Zubat run. Last Gengar comes out, and of course we get a critical hit to take it down. So Agatha is a first time victory. That now leads us on to the last Elite Four member, which is Lance the Dragon Trainer. We have Blizzard on our arsenal, so we actually should have a good chance to win. We've got Thunderbolt for the Gyarados. I think it's only really the Aerodactyl we're going to struggle with, I think. But in the same vein, we have a massive glass cannon. Our defences are awful. So if we get hit by a Hyper Beam... We might go down straight away, regardless of how many more levels above them we are. So Blizzard is not even one shot in the Dragonairs, which is not great. I think when it comes to the Dragonite, because it's four times weak to it, we might be all right. We just need to get past this Aerodactyl. Please do not use Takedown. It uses Supersonic, which is annoying. And there we go. We lose. Not too sure what the right player is going to be here or whether we just need to level up a bit more. We're going to have to see. Well, I've, I've added Thunder to the moveset now. It's more powerful than Thunderbolt, so it should give us a good good shout against that Gyarados. Dragonair, I'm going to go for Body Slam to start off with. It misses its Hyper Beam. That is absolutely clutch. I'm going to go for Blizzard on the second one. It doesn't take him out and he misses Slam as well. Okay, okay, this is looking good. This is looking very good. We're going to go for Blizzard against the Aerodactyl. And it's a one shot. Can Blizzard hit? It does, and it's a one shot crit. Okay, Rata, go on, son. You have just beaten Lance on your own. And that just leaves one more challenge before we can crown this Rata 
the champion of the Kanto region. Let's see how we do against our rival. This is going to be fun. <laughs> so, Jubbles sends out his Pidgeot. We have got Thunder, we've got Blizzard. We're going to go for Blizzard. And he goes for Blizzard back. That does a lot of damage. <laughs> okay, so Pidgeot is down. We're on half HP with five Pokemon to go. And we get hit by Sidebeam. We don't even outspeed the Alakazam. <laughs> oh my god, that was quick. I don't know what we're going to do differently here. Okay, so we're going to Blizzard. And we get the Freeze. Instead of going with Thunder, we're actually going to go with Mimic. So we've got to hope that we get a Paralysis or something. Come on, we need to Mimic Recover. If we Mimic Recover here, this is big brain strats. We get Recover. He goes for Psychic. Can we tank that? Please tank that. Please tank that. 16 HP left and we managed to beat him. Next up is the Rhydon and we're going to Recover here. Safest Pokemon to Recover on because mostly what he's going to do is use Tail Whip or Leah. And that actually helps us, to be fair. That adds to the badge boost glitch. And which means Blizzard nearly takes him out in one. Body Slam then finishes it off the remains. And we're on to the Executor. Blizzard again is the best player here. We could get the Freeze Chance. But to be fair, Body Slam probably is doing more damage. So we go through to the Gyarados without losing any HP. Gyarados hits with Hydro Pump. 29 HP left. We get the critical hit. And move on to Charizard. Do we get... We got the Paralysis. He goes for Rage. He goes for Rage. We've won. Oh my god. We've won. <laughs> he can't use any move but Rage. He's only doing a set amount of damage because we haven't hit him yet. Even with that. <laughs> oh my word. Level 69 Rattata beats the Elite Four. I'm not going to lie. That was extremely lucky that the Charizard went for Rage. And if it had gone for any other move, we'd have lost. I think when I got to that Alakazam... I mean, the, not the Alakazam. The, I, I can't even get my words out. I'm so happy with how this run went. It's not the greatest Pokemon, but we even beat... We only just missed out on the four-hour mark with a Rattata. I have not seen anyone else on YouTube get a run that good on the time with Rata. Please, people out there, if you're going to do a Rata run, that is the time that you need to beat. Because I've watched a lot of YouTubes. I've not seen anyone beat that yet. I might have YouTube's best time as a, for a Rata run. Please prove me wrong. Please put videos in the description. Tell me if you've got a quicker run than that. But either way, I'm happy with how this went. We've got a very high tier Pokemon there. So let's move on to the next wheel spin. First up, we are going to get Kabuto. We've done a fossil Pokemon these quite recently. I might leave that one to the side for now. Next is Beedrill. Yes, I think we might have chosen the next one already. Last up is Cubone. Nah, we're going we're gonna to go with Beedrill. I've been waiting for this to come up because it's such an interesting Pokemon. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching to the video. If you got to this point, you know what to do. Please smash that like and subscribe, you legends. And we will see you on the very next video with Beedrill. See you in a couple of days. Take care.